Kia ora koutou katoa. Welcome to Good Shepherd Church, Balmoral, as we celebrate Mass for the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to those of you who are visitors or newcomers to Good Shepherd today, and to those viewing this Mass on Shine TV. The presider today is our parish priest, Monsignor Bernard Kiley. Let us now stand and pray together the entrance hymn, How Great Thou Art. Tengawa el Timatua te Tilmaiti o Tewaru a Tapu. Friends, peace be with you. And, with your and on this beautiful day we gather to give thanks and praise to God. Then sings my soul. Together we sing. We allow ourselves to be touched by the presence and grace of God. The times perhaps we've missed the mark, we acknowledge our need of His grace, peace, and mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are mighty God, you are Prince of Peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us praise God as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, 
O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We think about the intentions we bring before the Lord today, the people in particular that we carry in our hearts. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, So you, O son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning for me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to war, the wicked to turn from their ways. The wicked person shall die in their iniquity. By their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked person to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, they shall die in their iniquity. But you will have saved your life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus said to his disciples, If your neighbor sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won him over. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, Amen, I say to you, if two of, of you agree on earth about anything for which you are about to pray, it shall be granted to you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Sometimes we hear of something called selective hearing. Sometimes in life we can compartmentalize things. We can have God celebrated in word and deed here, but that we might leave him at the door when we consider other parts of our life. But our psalm today, which uh, we sang, has the words, if today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. And it seems that uh, the gospel in particular puts forward for a pattern for us, a challenge, uh, in terms of how we relate to one another and how we uh, can try and address the selective hearing so that we are not compartmentalizing people in relationships, but allowing God to permeate every part of who we are. Sometimes when we are offended, we can uh, close in on ourselves we can uh, have a clenched fist, as it were. And what our faith invites us to do is to open our hearts to the presence and action of God in all areas of our life, areas that cause us shame or regret or hurt. So instead of getting to the end of our life with closed fists, 
We rather have open hands, open palms, open to the presence and peace that God offers us and challenges us to be instruments of peace to ourselves and to each other. I forget which film I saw many years ago, but they told a story about how they would capture monkeys. And apparently they, there is a place in the world where you can build a monkey trap with a hole in it, and the hole is just big enough for the monkey to stick the hand in and grab a nut or a treat. But the, once the treat is uh, being taken, the monkey can't pull his hand out. And of course, the people to capture the monkey just go along and pick them up. And all as the monkey needs to do is let go of what it's holding on to. But greed keeps him there. In some ways, it's a great image for us today and inviting us to think, what do we need to let go of? What relationships are we struggling with? What areas of our own life perhaps are a challenge to us? And are we allowing ourselves to have hearts that perhaps are sometimes hardened be softened by the faith we celebrate today? If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Recently, I came across um, a a little um, uh, expression which I'm going to share with you. It says, practice the pause. Pause before judging. Pause before assuming. Pause before accusing. Pause whenever you're about to react harshly and you'll avoid doing things and saying things you later regret. Food for thought as we allow our hearts to be touched by the good news put before us today by the Lord. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. We place our prayers before the Lord. We pray for ourselves and the needs of our world. We pray that we may be people of peace and reconciliation. May we have the courage and grace to initiate reconciliation, mend broken relationships, and be instruments of God's peace in all aspects of our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that as we gather for Eucharist, we will be mindful of the Lord's promise that where two or three are gathered in his name, he too is present. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that in this liturgical season of creation, that we may be good stewards of this beautiful world entrusted to us, mindful of the legacy we leave for future generations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis and all who gather next month for the Synod on Synodality. May it foster communion, participation, and mission in our beloved Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We pray for our nation as we prepare for the general election. May candidates be people of integrity who work for the well-being of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have died and those whose anniversaries occur at this time, that they will know the fullness of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, we place our prayers before you, spoken and unspoken. In your wisdom and great love, hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you gather men and women whom you have made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore now and for ages unending and all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, and send down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples. He said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, the clergy and all who serve you. We remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. 
Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And peace be with you. Peace be with you. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, he who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.